Anna is taking a break from a business update. She's having to run here to this and go back with her business update. So I just wanted to have, if you wanted to kickstart this with some energy about why we do what we do. So one of the things I want to ask both of you is that if you know Farzana, you know you will get very long WhatsApp messages from her. It's not two lines. It's like five paragraphs, okay? And 90% of them are about her mom or dad. 90% of them. So I want to ask both of you, you know, I'm also from a house of three daughters, where my dad said that you cannot get married till you have your masters, because you should never depend on anybody else for money. So I had a very strong father, and so did you have strong parents. So one of the things you always, both of you, talk about is upbringing, the importance of upbringing. Can each of you share what is it in your upbringing that made you feel that man, woman, doesn't matter, I'm going to go all out and uh, let people call you whatever, I'm going to be aggressive. So tell me. So she writes very long messages and I respond in words. <laughs> so <laughs> she writes these long messages and I'll send her a thumbs up and she said, can you show me some more reaction? <laughs> so that's us. Uh, but you know, you need to balance it out. When you have her as an older sister, <laughs> you yes. can't have the same face. She's an older sister to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. So I think um, uh, what helps us is, I think, freedom. Our parents gave us immense amount of free freedom. We didn't have any boundaries. We didn't have boundaries of gender, uh, caste, country. We grew up all over the world. You know that, Lakshmi. Yes. Uh, we grew up all over the world. And at any point, uh, our parents told us that don't be limited or don't feel limited or feel you, that you're lesser. You do your best. It doesn't matter whether you succeed or you don't. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you come first or last. And I'll give a funny anecdote. I was in class 10. And the maths teacher goes and tells my parents that, uh, and I was the youngest in my class 10. Uh, so for the boys, I skipped a class, so I was smart. Uh, so uh, I was youngest, and my maths teacher goes and tells my parents that she will fail ICSC. So school na ek grade rak dete hain, we'll make her give ICSC next year because once you fail ICSC board exams that time, you know it will always be on your career mark. So my mom uh, said, why do we need to make her? She'll do what she does, and she fails, she fails. It's okay, it doesn't matter. But if I keep her back, the impact on her morale will be much more than what that failing in the class will do to her. I obviously didn't fail, and I did really well. But uh, the fact is, they took the confidence. They said, even if she fails, that's totally fine. But we're not going to hurt her morale by keeping her back so that we can go and show off later that she got a 90% or whatever in the grade. So I think that element of freedom to fail to succeed, to do whatever we want, gave us the wings that we needed to fly. I didn't realize that Lakshmi is going to talk about my WhatsApp messages, but thank you so much for coming, all of you. Ink is what we call in Urdu, Ruhaniyat. For our family, for Farhana and me and mom and dad, Lakshmi, Vipasha, all of them are our Ruhaniyat. Um, so whatever and whenever we can do anything for them, we do it. Um, so we grew up. We grew up with lots of family around us. Uh, we have never lived alone. So whenever, we, and with our careers, we travel quite a bit. We have very uh, lonely journeys. But I ensure, whether it's Sangeeta or Lakshmi, mm -hmm. if I'm watching a movie in London and I'm swooning over Shah Rukh Khan, they know about it. <laughs> um, we know. So yeah, I think creating a sense of community and creating the fact that we are all in it together um, is also fundamental to the way Farhana and I have been raised. Um, we do uh, what we do for a living, but one of the things mom and dad both insist is the impact, the enablement, and the fact that there we are there for people we claim we love. Um, I think that upbringing, as Farhana said, is very critical to who we are. We grew up in various parts of the world. Um, home will always be India. Um, there are a group of people who, we, um, who are our inner world, who ensure that every time we fail, they raise us. Um, and we're just paying it forward. Yeah. And also, you know, both of you, Farzana, you've been uh, at TCS when it was your employee, 9,000 or something. Now there's 750,000 people. And you've been through the IoT revolution a lot. And you're at Microsoft now at a senior position. You both are very involved in technology. 
not just pure technology, but what impact it does out there. So I'd love for both of you to talk a little bit about, especially in India, we are so excited about what can happen and can we learn from the rest of the world and use the technology in a way that it can cause a positive impact. What are you, both of your views on it? So uh, I'll give a little bit of a view. So if you read up about Microsoft, what we've been saying from the beginning of the year is the amount of investments we're doing in AI. Uh, the reason being is that we see that the next wave of technology would be very AI driven. Now, having said that, uh, in a country like India, we have the largest startup ecosystem. And all of these startups are digitally native. What we call digital native is which uses technology as the core fundamental founder stone for uh, creating the business model. And that is what matters. Even if I take the large conglomerates, if I take uh, the Tatas and the Billas of the world and the Danis, they all will have a digitally native company in them, be it in a financial service or uh, around customer support or a new, new age innovations. Now, if you take places like uh, EV, electron, uh, the electrical vehicle, and you talk about what needs uh, India to be an EV country. It's the ecosystem. It's not about having cars which are EV. So that's all the ecosystem requires technology. So for us to be from move from fifth to go further up, and which we are very poised to, uh, in India, technology will be that one lever which can make or change the way the next couple of generations are. If you see the last 10 years of companies that have grown, the last decades, every decade, the companies just consistently stayed on path to scale it has been the ones which have leveraged technologies to evolve the business models. So take Geo for example. Uh, it was a petroleum company. It's Geo, you know, you now know Reliance, a Geo platform, which is a complete technology company. So how you disrupt your entire business model, leveraging technology as a cornerstone, becomes very, very critical. What do you think, Farzana? You know, uh, I started working in the pre Y two K era, and a lot of people here don't even know what a pre-Y2K era would be. I think Aryantha and I were talking about it last night. You know, we have seen chunks of technology develop at very rapid pace in very short spans of time, right? So first it was digitization, it was, uh, you, know, so, you know, getting processes in place and stuff. Today, what technology will do to India per se is that a billion people will have access to knowledge, will have access to skill, and that is going to transform the way India works, right? So one was when the Amul happened. Then came the mobiles in India, right? The poorest could afford a mobile. Today, you go to any small town in India, and you ask, they all want to be entrepreneurs. When I was work, when I started working, I don't think entrepreneurship was even a concept we could afford, right? As middle class Indians working, studying, going to the right colleges, the approach was you get a good job, you solve, you know, make your future secure. But what tech has done is has given power the, has given people the power to dream. That today I can be a doctor and I can be an entrepreneur. Today I can come from a very middle class family in India, but I have technology, I have groups of people, and I can work remotely from somewhere and work and create something. So it removes the dependency on infrastructure. So one of the things it has done is it has unleashed the potential of every Indian to think big and to become an entrepreneur. And India per se, or um, you know, not for any specific company, but because I come from the Tatas, TCS or Tatas are structuring it in such a way that we have inclusive growth. That, imp Im that implies that whether we build up institutions that are going to help people learn skill or even deploy the technology that is there, right? Artificial intelligence, we are just creating up uh, centers right now all over, the, all over the country to get people trained and use what an AI is. You know, in certain circles, we would know what an artificial intelligence implication is. But how does it play out for the rest of the world? Or how does it play out for the rest of India? That's something. So I think three very important things technology has done is given entrepreneurship real legs Second, it has removed this entire fear that if I fail, there's nothing else I can do. So people are much more stronger and bolder on who they want to be. The, the expression of individuality has become higher. 
And third, and I've been saying it for the last two and a half decade that I've been working, uh, it has created a solid middle class in India, which I'm very proud of. I think technology per se for India created livelihood, jobs like no one else has. Uh, for me, that's a, that's a, that's a personal uh, uh, win. So uh, my last question to both of you is, what comes to the top of your mind about how India will be talked about 10 years from now? One word. Technology superpower. We're already there. Technology superpower. What would you so say? I'll not that's say in a one word because that's not going to be fair for where we are positioned. There will be a realignment of how the world works. Complete realignment. Every supply chain, whether it's healthcare, education, production, manufacturing, everything is going to get realigned, guys. It's not going to be the way we have seen it. And at the center of that would be technology. And that will imply that the demographic dividend that we have in India of young people will have a global opportunity of creating great companies out of India. That's why I said you cannot do it in one word. I think we will be the great intellectual capital of the world. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to both Thank of you. you.